Hey you guys, what's up? This is about the second derivative test for local extrema. You should have watched the first derivative test, taken notes on it. That was the previous video to this one, ideally. But here you are watching second derivative test and there's a couple of conditions that we have to establish. First of all, the function that we're looking at has to be continuous and twice differentiable. If it's the second derivative test, you better be able to take the second derivative of the function. I don't exactly know what type of function this is. It looks like some sort of even, like, you know, to the fourth power type function. So there for its derivative would be like a cubic type function. And the second derivative itself would be like a quadratic, right? Fourth power derivative would be a third power and the second derivative would be a second power or that sort of like hierarchy. What we did in the previous video, the previous video referencing first derivative test is we had to analyze the first derivative. So that's what I have here. I've got sketched the first derivative of the function and everywhere that the original parent function changes direction and it will be smooth because it's twice differentiable. So everywhere the function changes direction is a place where the first derivative touches the X axis. Remember, the height of the derivative is a direct relationship to the steepness of the line of the parent function. So if right here the function is not steep at all, then its first derivative needs to be on the x-axis. Further on, the function's climbing, 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 but it flattens out again, again, smoothly flattens out to the top. And right here, the height of this function, well, we're not worried about the height of the function, we're worried about how flat the function is. It is not steep at all right there, so its first derivative has to be zero. And we continue on to where the function, once again, f, green, changes direction, and when it changes direction, it's changing smoothly. So at the bottom, at this minimum value right here, we know that it has a place where the first derivative is zero because the function itself had no slope at that point or zero sorry zero slope at that line well this is called the second derivative test for a reason because if you understand first derivative we we actually get to do less work generating uh, an analysis of what type of minimum or maximum we have if we can get to the second derivative of the function. So I didn't draw the second derivative. I don't want to draw that on this poster. It's already muddled up enough, but maybe that's a challenge or a skill for you to do and for you to talk to me about as well. What would the second derivative of this potentially look like? If I look at the first derivative and then from our conversation generate the second derivative, I would notice that the first derivative is increasing, 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 increasing until right here. Now the first derivative has a maximum, and again, I, I drew this, so it's not exactly perfect, but we wanna like be able to say right there is where the first derivative, that function, changes direction and starts going negative until it changes direction again and becomes positive. Now, depends on the number of changes that you have. But if you think about what the first derivative's derivative is, then you're talking about the second derivative. And so in this section, the first derivative is is growing, that means the second derivative is positive. And then in this section, the first derivative is falling, which means that its derivative is negative. And then once again, it's increasing in the first derivative, so the second derivative would be positive because it's all based upon slopes of slopes. Well, if f is continuous and twice differentiable, then we get to go back to the original function and answer this question. Right here, this is a critical point because the function has a derivative that is zero. And then if you look at the orange that I've got right here, orange signifying that the second derivative is positive, we can tell that because the first derivative is growing. Right here, if the first derivative has a positive second derivative, that's a minimum. Okay, moving on. So over here, same situation. In the original parent function, right here where the function changes direction, it has a first derivative value of zero. But in the interval around that first derivative, that second derivative is positive. And so if you have a first derivative is zero, second derivative is positive, minimum, local minimum. Now it's not on the poster because I wanted you to see the video and maybe like connect the two, so here it is. Right here at the top of this graph, right here, the function, the original parent function changes direction. And that's signified by how the first derivative touches the x-axis at that value. But in the interval around the first derivative, the 
first derivative is decreasing. So therefore, its second derivative is negative. Now here it is. If the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is negative, the original function is at a maximum. I'll say that again. If the first derivative is zero and in the interval around the first derivative, the second derivative is negative, then that original location on the parent function is a maximum. Add that to your own notes. I didn't want to muddle the, the poster any more than that. Thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you later.